Good evening, everybody. I'd like to welcome you to the regular council meeting for September the 16th. I'd like to ask everybody that can to stand as we start every meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance, the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Any addition, deletions, or amendments? Anybody signed up for citizen participation? No, sir. Okay, thank you. Um, city boards and committees, Dr. Dr. Trout. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to move for the appointment of Candy Daly uh, to as a member of the Economic Development Committee. Second for Dr. Dunn. Uh, any question on the motion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Is Kenny here? Ms. Daly? Oh, we'll catch you on the next meeting. Then. Okay. Uh, city Manager's report. Good evening, Mr. Mayor and City Council and residents. We have no report today, sir. We're, everything's uh, on course. Thank you. Okay. All right, Council, you got a consent agenda, items A through E. Do I have a motion? Dr. Hamm, and second by Mr. Brady, Gardner. Yeah. Mr. Gardner. Yeah. Uh, any question on the motion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. All right. Item A under P, uh, Old Business P. Can Ridge. Mr. City Manager? Or, or Good evening, Mr. Mr. Mayor and, and members of the Council. I'm Joe Minert, the City of Bowie Planning Director, to introduce this item. Uh, this is a proposed subdivision plan, uh, which uh, you're not reviewing tonight. What you're reviewing is an annexation proposal for the piece of property on which uh, the subdivision plan has been discussed. Um, the property is known as the Pecan Ridge property. It's located off of Lloyd Station Road adjacent to the WBNA Trail. The property is about 42 acres and it does have an approved conservation sketch plan for development of 80 single family detached uh, lots. Um, council reviewed a uh, request last year uh, on uh, the app developer's initial um, proposal for annexation and at the conclusion of the public hearing last October, council approved a motion directing staff to begin the process of reviewing an annexation possibility with the developer, but only after the council had reviewed and voted on the preliminary plan of subdivision. Uh, Caruso Homes, who is a developer in this case, has prepared the preliminary plan of subdivision and it's been submitted to park and planning for acceptance. At this time, uh, Caruso Homes wanted to come and address the council uh, to further discuss the aspects of the annexation proposal. So what's on the agenda tonight is not a subdivision plan, it's the simply the developer's uh, opportunity to come and talk further about their plans or uh, their intentions for uh, the council entertaining annexation of their property. And uh, council will uh, hear this uh, input from the developer, hear from the public at the public hearing, and then direct staff accordingly uh, in any direction you want to go. So that concludes the staff presentation. And Mr. Gibbs is here on behalf of Caruso Home. Welcome, sir. Happy to. Good evening. Good evening, uh, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. Edward Gibbs, uh, an attorney with offices in Largo, and uh, I'm here this evening uh, representing Caruso Homes. Mr. Jeff Caruso is present in the front row. Uh, Mr. Andy Garrett, also of Caruso, is behind him to his left, and uh, Phil Hughes of Rogers Consulting, our civil engineer, uh, is with us this evening. When, when we were here last, um, we appeared uh, basically because uh, when we were in preliminary meetings with your staff, your staff suggested that there may be an interest on the part of the city in annexing this property. Uh, so we came before you. Uh, we presented to you the outline of the subdivision that we were thinking about, uh, 80 lots on uh, 42 acres. And uh, what we understood that you had said is that proceed with discussions on the annexation, but it wouldn't be determined as to whether or not the city would annex the property until such time as the preliminary subdivision plan was before the city. 
Um, so we went through, this is a conservation subdivision technique which we're proposing to use. Uh, basically what it says is that if you have significant natural features, and in this case it's the pecan groves on the property, um, you can use that technique if in fact uh, there, is, there is deemed to be uh, a substantial conservation purpose. And so um, that subdivision technique requires you to first process and obtain approval of a conservation sketch plan. Uh, we filed that plan, we went through that process, um, and it has been acted upon by the planning director uh, with the certificate uh, attached to the uh, sketch plan by the planning director, and then uh, with the next step in the process being the preliminary subdivision plan itself. The preliminary plan has been filed for pre-acceptance review. We anticipate uh, that the plan will be accepted uh, certainly within the next week. Uh, that will begin a 70-day process of taking the subdivision plan to the planning board. During that process, we'll be appearing before um, the city again. Uh, what we're hoping is that there is some further direction with regard to the annexation uh, for a couple of reasons. Number one, um, the annexation process itself uh, as you well know from other annexations you've been involved in, is it's, it's not the shortest process. I mean, there has to be an annexation agreement, there has to be uh, notice placed in the property, uh, in the newspaper for a public hearing, there's a public hearing on the annexation, there's a 45 day period for referendums, referendum petitions to be filed. Um, so it can take several months for the annexation process to complete. Um, we're interested in annexing the property into the city, uh, and we'd like to begin the process um, during the processing of the preliminary subdivision plan as opposed to waiting until it's completed, uh, simply because running it concurrent is, I think, a good idea from a timing perspective. Um, there is a second reason uh, why we're here again this evening, and that is the uh, using a conservation subdivision technique the, the conservation areas on the property have to be deeded to a third party. Uh, we can't deed them to a homeowners association, so the pecan groves are gonna have to be deeded to uh, some entity which is nonprofit in nature. And we had again discussed that with your staff, and there was, I think, interest expressed that perhaps the city would be um, would be interested in taking title to those conservation areas, the pecan groves. So park and planning staff has asked us if we have, I, one of the things you have to do when you file the subdivision plan is you have to file a draft of the deed conveying the conservation areas. We did that. The grantee is left blank on the deed because we haven't identified that entity yet. If we're annexing into the city, certainly it would be the city. Um, so we'd like some guidance, hopefully, from you as to your interest in, uh, uh, in being the grantee to take title to the pecan groves. There is a section uh, down by the, toward the front of the property that, that has part of the pecan grove and is one of the conservation areas. And you know that might be a, uh, a good location for some type of uh, interactive facility. So th those are the reasons we're here. We're not really here to ask you to vote on the subdivision tonight. It's not appropriate, uh, but we, we did hope to get some further input from you on the annexation and the annexation process. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, sir. Um, do we have anybody sign up to speak? Uh, thank you. As I call your name, if you would come up to the podium and introduce yourself for the folks at home. First speaker is Nancy Johnson. Welcome, ma'am. Good evening. Um, I'm actually Belinda Johnson. My mother signed up to speak with you all tonight and she couldn't make it, so I'm stepping in. Um, we live at 8500 Laurel Bowie Road, um, now known as Lloyd Station Road. We are at the very top of the hill and a piece of our property is adjacent to Temptation Farm, to be known as Pecan Ridge. 
Um, my grandparents bought this farm in 1949. They were active in the community. Um, they were founding members of Free State Riding Club, which is a non, um, it's a volunteer organization. We are located at Fletcher Town Road, and my mother and I are still active in Free State Riding Club. Um, we, we are active in the horse community, and our farm has horses on it. When you talk about annexing this subdivision, conservation subdivision, into the city of Bowie, you're not only talking about bringing more people to this location. You're talking about bringing traffic onto the street that I live on. You're talking about bringing more people onto property that's already set aside for BG&E with, um, with wildlife. You're talking about completely disturbing a ecosystem that's been there since before 1949. Um, I'm concerned about annexing the road are you going to not only have Caruso fix the road that's already there? Are you gonna have them annex the entire street? Or are you only gonna annex half of the street? If you annex half of the street to get access to your new conservation, are you then going to have to annex all of the properties on this street into your city? Because Unfortunately, the city isn't going to give me anything that I'm not already getting from the county. Good. Okay, I already have trash pickup and snow removal. I already have litter pickup. So if I get into the city of Bowie, am I going to get snow plow service? Because my mom lives two blocks away in the city and doesn't get snow plow service. Um, she, her street is never plowed when there's snow. And now you're going to put 80 houses behind a street that isn't plowed. I, I just don't understand how it's going to work for us. And I'm also concerned about annexing another 80 homes into the Rockledge community because I have children that go to Rockledge Elementary School. Okay. How, how's that going to affect an overpopulated elementary school? an overpopulated middle school, an overpopulated high school. Are there plans to add a high school to the city of Bowie? Because that traffic is insane. Okay. okay? I, it's just, there's a lot of things that I don't think everybody's looking at when they're, they're saying, oh, development is great. Development is great for some people. It's not gonna necessarily be great for the people who already live in this community. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. Thank Appreciate you. Your um, Aviva uh, Nebeski, welcome. Mr. Mayor and members of the council, Good thank you for you. having me tonight. Um, I feel like I spent a lot of time up here talking to you guys. Um, <laughs> well, we enjoy it. Hi. <laughs> Long time no see. Um, I misunderstood the notification about this meeting and believed that we were discussing that you were going to vote on annexation and the remarks that I had prepared were about that vote. Um, however, I still have some things that I want to say. Um, I recognize that this is not the place to talk about whether or not this project is going to be built. You don't have any say in that matter. I am on record as opposing this vehemently. Um, I'm not sure whether Caruso and his people are aware that the Prince George's County Historic Preservation Committee met today to discuss the concrete railroad bridge that I own in conjunction with Maryland National Capital Planning. The recommendation was to make that a historic landmark. Um, that designation will, <clears throat> sorry, will probably kick in a buffer zone, which is going to further impact the ability of traffic to get into your development. Um, my husband and I are also in the process of having our land surveyed so that we can determine whether or not you truly do have a sufficient right of way to get in there. Um, what I'd like to say to the council is, as my neighbor Belinda said, um, we, she does not live in the city. I do not live in the city. Um, if you annex 80 homes into the city, you are going to be going from the city to the not city to the city again. You're going to be dealing with plowing. So if the county plows my road, 
late and the city wants to plow that development early, are you gonna plow my road? If there's an issue which we have had nonstop with trash and um, recycling, sometimes they just forget to pick us up because you know we're sort of a weird little section. So does that mean that the city's gonna start accidentally picking up my trash and recycling? That would be nice, I appreciate it since I'm not paying you taxes. Um, it just doesn't seem to make a lot of sense to me. I'd also like to comment on the fact that there are seven members here, and as far as I know, only three of you are running for re-election, which means that you're a lame duck council. And I would suggest that discussion of annexation, and I mean, it's fine if Mr. Minor wants to keep investigating this process, but really voting on annexation at this point would be inappropriate as the majority of you won't be here and it would be much more appropriate for the incoming council to make determinations about how the city is going to be affected and how that is going to impact them down the line because frankly y'all aren't going to be here so i don't think you should make decisions for people when you're not really representing them thank you thank you ma'am linda cooper Welcome, ma'am. Good evening. I'll have to read mine. I'm 10 years retired and long out of being accustomed to public speaking. Um, good evening, members of the council. My name is Linda Cooper, a longtime activist in the city of Bowie, having been a resident here for 57 years uh, in the Levitt Bowie that um, represents the birth of my children to my golden years, so to speak. I come to you tonight asking, as others have at prior meetings, that you give due consideration to tabling or deferring action on issuing a bond for the development and construction of a two-surface ice rink in the city of Bowie, including the debt costs it is projected to come to $30 million that will not be paid off until 2049. This poses a 30-year debt burden on residents of this city. A child born today into a Bowie household who chooses to remain a city of Bowie resident into his or her adulthood will be affected by a tax burden that may effectively close down serious consideration of any other significant community resource for recreation or education. For example, there is strong interest in a nature center and environmental resource center. It would be of great value to consider that as a project in the near future, not 30 years away. If Prince George's County envisions, <coughs> excuse me, if Prince George's County envisions the ice rink as a regional facility, which I believe they do, hence the desire that it be built on church roads so as to be more accessible to county residents, then the county needs to step up and absorb a significant share of the costs of design and construction, certainly at least one third of the likely deal for their ice rink. Have they been approached to put their money behind their advocacy? Their hand is the heaviest one on our property tax bill every year. And if the Maryland National Capital Parks and Planning Commission, with their zoning authority, also envisions this as the most appropriate siting, they also need to shoulder some of the costs. Maybe they will sign on for operating costs of staffing, maintenance, and repairs for the next 30 years or so after the facility opens. I mean, they also collect a fee on our tax bill every year. If, at a minimum, you identified the indebtedness and sat at the table with the government entities promoting the project, then the citizens of Bowie may, might not be quite so anxious about moving out of Bowie to escape escalating taxes. Members of the council, I feel you simply have not finished your homework. You need to look wider and deeper than it, appear, than it appears many of you have. There is not, after all, a huge buoy civic outcry for the double surface ice rink. Indeed, I have neither seen nor heard such objection to a proposed project in all my years here. 
when the cost hit the local headlines, the for sale signs visibly went up all over town. Seriously, do you drive around? You need to, be, need to table to perhaps an indefinite time the call to issue a bond that shall not be brought back to the table before the conclusion of the scheduled 2019 buoy election of a new mayor and council members and their installation. Is it not more than a bit presumptuous that with known changes soon to take place, you would still go ahead and tie the hands financially of a new mayor and council? Do you really think only you have thoughts, plans, ideas, concerns about development of Bowie? I've heard that there are those running for the council who've lived here for a long while but have never even voted in a city election. Not sure that's the best remedy. But I am sure that the present leadership that is so fond of closed sessions is also not the best thing for us. There are a couple of current members whom I do admire greatly for their open communications with their district constituents, but others who seem mired down in ho-hum. That's what elections are all about. In Bowie, it is time and past time to listen to the new, and most definitely time to let them have the say on the use of resources to implement, which just may be projects that are more desired by the broad sweep of citizens than $30 million for two circles of ice. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Appreciate your comment. Bruce Millen. Well, I have a handout that I'll give you real quick. Oh, I get it. And then here's the, uh, the bifocal version. <laughs> okay. You just drop them here. We'll pass them out for you. Oh, okay. My name is Bruce Milam. I've lived at uh, Lloyd Station Road, uh, 8010 Lloyd Station Road for 18 years. I've been in the Bowie area for 35 years. And currently on the um, uh, Lloyd Station Road, or it was Old Laurel Bowie Road, we have about 17 cars that use that road and get in and out. And uh, what I want to do is, is kind of uh, present something that will help both of us out. And uh, um, Currently there's about 17 cars by local residents and when the development's added it'll be between 160 and 320 cars if they have two per house or four per house or it'll be a lot more cars. And uh, the current intersection is inadequate to get back out onto uh, 11th Street or also on the racetrack road. And when the construction trucks start to turn left on the uh, a normal school road, they'll get T-boned. It's a real problem there right now. You can't see oncoming traffic. So um, uh, if you put a light there, it'll back up traffic on the 197 and we'll have a backup similar to what we have in the appropriately named F section in the other end of 197. So we want to avoid that. So if we had a circle as shown in the drawing, it would allow an orderly flow and it would also provide a calming when you're coming towards 197 down the intersection. Just orient you here, if you go from here out 197, turn left on racetrack, and you come up and there's normal school road and then there's like an A-shaped area. If the, the point of the A, if you put a traffic circle, as has been proposed by other developers in the past, the, the traffic will flow and then in coming the other direction there'll be a calming so they, they uh, less people will actually slide out of the road into the woods, which is a uh, something that happens there now. Um, a circle is an outstanding solution that will preserve the flow from 197 and preserve limb and life of the citizens of Bowie and my neighbors. And I would really appreciate y'all considering this in the future. Okay, thank you, sir. Appreciate thank you coming. Uh, Gwendolyn Morgan. Welcome, ma'am. Good evening. 
Good evening. Um, my name's Gwendolyn Morgan, and I'm at 8504 in Normal School Road. And that's the main reason why I'm here. I'm still concerned about that lot that I'm on, the way it's shaped, where it's sitting. And I need, I've been here like three times, and I still don't know what's going on with that lot. What is, where's it going to put me? Are they going to need some of it? Which is fine, but I like to know ahead of time. Uh, that's, uh, you know. Well, totally. And when are they going to get to that point is what yeah. I'm trying to find out. You know, it's taken off a long time. Yeah, well, we don't have the, the, the design plan yet, but uh, that'll certainly be all right. Yeah, well, I had talked to the attorney yeah. some weeks ago about where I'm sitting. And since I'm sitting right in the middle, you know, because of the size of the roads with the others are right. It's, you don't have the space for that traffic. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'd be more than willing to give up some of it. It's fine with me, but I need to know. You know, yes. And do you know when I'm going to ever find out? Well, it's going to come back here through the process, and when that comes, we'll have a final answer for you. Okay, perfect. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Appreciate your patience. All right, that's all the people I've signed up uh, to speak. Um, um, if that, uh, Mr. Stab? Yeah, wait a minute. Any, any questions of staff? Go. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so real quick for uh, staff, uh, or maybe the developer can better answer this one. Uh, when are we anticipating a preliminary plan of subdivision to come before the city council? Uh, Councilman Estev, Mr. Gibbs had stated that it was being submitted this week and, and accepted. If it's accepted by park and planning, that starts the 70 day clock. And so our public hearing would have to be held within the next couple of months. Okay, so we would see a preliminary plan of subdivision for this project within the next two months then, provided that things go well with Maryland National Capital Park and Planning for them this yes, week. Yes, more than like. Perfect, okay. Sorry, I'm jotting down notes. Um, good. Uh, what is the benefit to the city, Mr. Minert, for the city taking on the title for the conservation areas in this proposal? Well, we would, we would look at um, the pecan grove as the primary feature of this site that's being preserved, and uh, we feel that it's got some public benefit value, uh, possibly could become a city park, public park in the future. We've had our arborist and uh, community forester take a look at those trees, and they feel that they're in good condition. That pecan grove is adjacent to the WBNA trail, which is gaining in popularity with uh, bicyclists and walkers. So it presents a good opportunity for having some public open space for people to relax and enjoy the, the, the atmosphere of the trees. And uh, we also feel that with the trails master plan that there is an opportunity there to uh, inform people about the nearby services of Old Town Bowie. So we could create a trailhead facility there and encourage people to go up into Old Town Bowie and, and take, uh, take part in some of the activities up there. Okay, good to know. Um, one thing that came up tonight, how would it work, uh, Mr. Minard, as far as services like snow plowing? So where you have one community that's in Bowie, but in order to get there, you have to go through communities that are not in Bowie. How does that work? Do we end up just plowing the whole road? Do, do we have any sense of how that that might transpire? Oh, uh, That's probably a public works question more. Oh, well, I got the answer to that one, sir. Uh, we don't plow roads that aren't in the city, period. So we would bypass that area and go to the city property, city rights of way and plow them, unless given direction otherwise. Okay, so we would go through the area unplowed. We would bypass it, go, uh, go to our, the, the areas that we're responsible for. Okay, interesting. Good to know. Very interesting. Okay. Um, and then, Mr. Minor, are we anticipating uh, a possible annexation incurring to the city any responsibilities uh, that, that don't currently exist that, that could represent, you know, potential challenges, costs to the city uh, in the long term? This would be a typical residential annexation. There really wouldn't be any additional cost to the city. Um, obviously, if the city took over the pecan grove, there would be some uh, adjacent or additional costs related to maintaining that as a public parcel. Um, but there's nothing unusual about um, the site. It's a typical uh, residential subdivision that would meet the county standards. 
And then actually I'll continue with you since we're on the topic, Mr. Miner. Uh, so in that case, uh, we don't have any information from a traffic study or anything like that at this stage that would enlighten us as to what potentially those costs you know, might be as far as road improvements that have to be made, either uh, at the developer's dime or ours. The developer is in the process of preparing his traffic information to be submitted as part of that package with the, uh, the park and planning acceptance. And so the study is prepared but we haven't done any review or anything of that. Okay, and so I'm gonna guess similarly, because we're still waiting on a preliminary plan of subdivision, we don't have any details yet on impact uh, to schools or anything like that. Um, staff typically waits for the referrals that we get from the public school system, and that's usually uh, within the first couple weeks after the subdivision plan has been accepted and referred out. Uh, there will be a staff level meeting and we will get the input from the agencies and that's when we'll know what the official position is for, uh, from the school system. Okay, and emergency services as well. We probably don't have any details on that until we've seen a preliminary plan of subdivision. Yes, that would be correct. The same timetable would apply. Okay. Uh, how about water and sewer? Again, that, uh, the function of a preliminary plan is to really assess all of those things that you're talking about, including water and sewer. So, you know, while the developer may have engineered some things and he may be able to answer some of these questions, the actual response from the agencies will not be given until the plan is under review and, and we have that referral meeting. Okay. Um, in that case, uh, do you mind if I uh, ask you a couple questions directly then, sir? Uh, so then to the issue of, uh, let's start with water and sewer. Uh, we haven't seen a preliminary plan of subdivision yet. Uh, what are the thoughts right now on that? Well, the, you know, the county has water and sewer categories. Mm -hmm. And this property is in the appropriate category to be served with public water and sewer. Uh, there is adequate capacity. Uh, there is adequate proximity of lines. We can certainly have our civil engineer address that, but uh, um, a basically, administratively, a determination has been made that water and sewer capacity exists for this property. It's in the appropriate category to be subdivided and for service to be provided. Specifically, are you anticipating a WSSC connection? Yes. Okay, so this would be WSSC and not city water and sewer. All right, that's important. Okay. Um, and then as far as um, uh, potential uh, uh, um, planned improvements to the uh, road access, uh, right. I think we, it was called Laurel Bowie Road, and I think uh, one of the residents in this room has worked to change that. I don't know what, what it's called right now. Old Station. Old Station. There we go. Lloyd. Oh, Lloyd Station. Very good. Gotcha. Right. Google, Google has not updated it, by the way. No. Sure. Um, <laughs> but um, uh, any uh, planned improvements to Lloyd Station Road then? Yeah, well, we have a traffic study that mm -hmm. has been prepared. It has been filed with, uh, we, first of all, we have, we have gotten two sets of pre-acceptance review comments that we have addressed from mm -hmm. Park and Planning, and that's why we now anticipate that within the next week this subdivision is going to be accepted. Um, our, you know, I didn't bring our transportation engineer here this evening because this is not a subdivision hearing. Sure. Uh, but his report uh, comes to the conclusion that adequate public facilities exist from a transportation perspective. There may be transportation improvements that this developer is required to make in order to accomplish that. Uh, but to the extent that that's required and determined by the Transportation Planning Division at Park and Planning Commission, that would be a condition of the approval of this subdivision. Okay, so we're not, we don't have any specific answers then on any potential improvements to Lloyd Station Road. Well, I mean, if I was coming here on a subdivision, I would have brought the list, the full list of the improvements. We, we came to talk about annexation. Gotcha. But I'll be happy to provide that information through uh, Mr. Meinhart to be dispersed to you. Gotcha. I, I, I even think the city might have a copy of our study. Yes, we have a preliminary copy. Okay, so I, I think you can probably anticipate where I'm heading with this, uh, that we have a lot of unanswered questions, and, and just speaking on my own behalf for the purpose of annexation, you know, I would be kind of curious in, in seeing some of, the, some of these details that, that might be better answered in a preliminary plan of subdivision. It sounds like the clock on that is 70 days. Uh, that doesn't seem like a particularly long wait. I'm sure that staff can accommodate, and we will be very happy to get you back as soon as we can. Uh, to be able to make a decision on annexation then, but just kind of sharing that's where I'm leaning right now. But I let me, let me also just address, uh, you raised an sure. issue uh, relative to uh, schools, police, fire, emergency. Uh, years ago, uh, there was an adequacy test that was applied for those types of services. If there weren't sufficient seats available in any particular school, then you didn't pass that adequacy test. Um, also years ago, 
a determination was made by the county that they no longer wished to apply that type of test. And so they requested authority from the state, from the General Assembly, to, um, to have what's called a school facility surcharge and a police fire surcharge. And so now we are in a pay, throughout all of Prince George's County, we are in a pay and go situation. And I think that payment is upwards of $30,000 per unit that the developer pays at the time of building permit uh, to Prince George's County uh, for school for school funding and for any uh, police fire emergency and whether you know whether you pass or don't pass you pay that fee period sure no uh, it's true and the the schools in uh, public safety surcharge uh, have been around for a little while and uh, just on our own end the, one of the challenges we have with that is that you know that money kind of goes to the county and there's there's no guarantee that that money ends up coming to, to local right. schools and that's that's one of the challenges that we have with right. that but right. and, I do appreciate your being here tonight sure thank you all right thank you yeah. that's all I had mr. Miner and mr. Block mr. Wolf thank you and I'll uh, keep you standing there for just a quick second uh, you made a comment earlier about uh, the uh, the Grove and entitling it uh, to a nonprofit, and you, you mentioned City, of course, and we talked about that. Mm -hmm. Can you can you but go back to what you uh, mentioned briefly, which was you were not able to title it to the homeowners association? Can you explain that and how that works? Yeah, um, the, they they require a nonprofit w with which meets the Internal Revenue Service guidelines in order to uh, be the title owner to um, any conservation area. So we will have some areas in this subdivision which will be conveyed to a private homeowners association. Mm -hmm. there, there certainly will be some of that. As a matter of fact, it's, there are areas on the plan which we have designated to be conveyed to a homeowners association, but the actual conservation areas and I can give you the quote but, but uh, uh, you, it has to meet certain internal revenue service criteria in order to hold title for, hmm. to, to conservation areas with a conservation subdivision and so and the city would meet that gotcha now in uh, in the alternative if the city does not annex mm -hmm. Uh, how would you, to whom would you convey, what would the typical type of organization that you go find? Probably a 501c3 foundation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Which, which, you know, I, I mean, there's a, a much greater connection, if I can use that word, if sure. we were be, to be able to deed that to the city, because as Mr. Mine, Miner pointed out, uh, the one pecan grove is proximate to the WBNA trail. Uh, and it would provide an excellent opportunity for some type of interactive structure to be placed there, whether it's benches or uh, an area for people to rest when they come off the trail, uh, or for signing opportunities for to direct you to other places in the city. So uh, I think there's a synergy that could be created uh, if the city were to own that parcel. But it would, it, if failing the city, it's probably going to be a, a foundation. Um. The uh, next question I have, I think this uh, ties into uh, Mr. Meinart. Uh, the comment that we heard earlier from one of our speakers about the roundabout uh, solution for that intersection, would that be in the scope of this discussion uh, as far as um, as far as the planning for for the county, and would there be any a reasonable expectation that a developer would be responsible for any or part of that solution? Um, as Mr. Gibbs mentioned earlier, the transportation conditions could be made conditions of the preliminary plan of approval or preliminary plan approval and um, if that's the case there could be uh, cooperative uh, partnership with the state and county. Uh, normal school road is county road um, the other roads are state controlled. Um, it could be a solution that is mutually agreed upon, even if there's not a traffic uh, concern that is driving the need for it. So it's an alternative. Typically circles are an alternative to signalization, which means that you have an adequate level, inadequate level of service and you need to address it through a signal or through a circle. Um, so it's really something that I think would have to come out through the review process and if there was a desire on the part of the state and the county to work with this developer 
to make something like that happen, it, it could come to fruition, but uh, it is likely not going to be a condition of approval if the intersection is not failing in capacity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It would seem to me that from a from a traffic standpoint that that would be beneficial to the entire community because I believe it would have a calming effect for that area. Would you agree generally or disagree? Would that be beneficial, do you think? Is that a question? To no, I'm sorry, I'm, Mr. Minard still, I'm sorry. Well, the circles typically serve that function and, um, and allow the traffic to flow at the same time. Um, if you recall the, sig or the uh, circle that's at uh, Maryland 193 and Oak Grove Road, mm -hmm. there's a lot of traffic that passes through that circle. It's a fairly small circle, but it does allow the traffic to flow and it, it slows the traffic down. So you could have a similar effect at this location um, that would benefit the travel patterns as well as the safety of the area. Mm -hmm. And uh, back to uh, another comment that was, uh, or another issue that was raised was, uh, annexations of the roads which it would, what if any additional road surface would we be taking on um, councilman wolfley currently lloyd station road is already in the city if you uh, recall that uh, when the levitt sections of Bowie were developed in the 60s mm -hmm. yes. um, the annexation actually occurred out of old town Bowie in the direction of the levitt areas and so the old route 197 alignment was basically uh, the 100 foot wide swath that mm -hmm. connected Old Town Bowie to the newer parts of Bowie. So Lloyd Station Road has always been in the city limits. And so this property is adjacent to the current city boundary. All right. Thank you. So the only additional burden would be what's associated with the actual neighborhood uh, community that gets, that gets built. If, if the city annexes it yep. and those streets become, those public streets become city streets, <coughs> Lloyd, Lloyd Station Road is a state controlled road and has been. Okay, all right, thank you. Uh, and then uh, another uh, follow up question for, uh, for a developer. Um, given what we're here to discuss this evening, uh, my understanding is notwithstanding the you know, conversation here that you're still interested in pursuing annexation regardless of just, uh, it's not contingent on any outcome from this evening's discussion, correct? No, we're, we're still interested in pursuing it. We mm -hmm. just recognize that it's a time-consuming yep. process, yep. and you know, it would, be, it would be our hope and desire that we didn't have to commence the process after the approval of the preliminary subdivision plan, but rather during it, um, so that we don't have this hiatus. We get the approval of the preliminary subdivision plan, and then we spend six months uh, going through the annexation process, but that you know that's really it. I mean, the city, if I'm not mistaken, you have your um, stormwater approval mm -hmm. authority yourself, mm -hmm. and and so you know that that is something that would have to be altered uh, relative to the storm drain plan that has been prepared thus far. Excellent. So Thank there, you. there there are some economies of scale involved. Understood. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Thank you. Uh, yes, just one question. So for a 42-acre lot and 80 lot subdivision, can you give us an approximate how large is the conservation area that we're looking at? Uh, you know, I th I'd like to call Mr. Hughes up to answer that question. Pardon me? Of conservation area? Okay. Did you hear? The, the, he's saying... Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. So that's good for so that, Mr. For the purposes of your record, that was Mr. Phil Hughes, and he said it was 40 percent of the acres. We're 41.7 acres, I think, and 40 um, percent of that would have to be allocated to conservation areas. Thank you. Any other questions, Dr. Trout? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. Minor, what is staff's recommendation on this? Well, this evening we just brought this request to council as it was presented by the developer in his request. Um, we don't have a recommendation. It's, it's, it's council's decision to decide whether you want to accept the idea of taking over the pecan grove, which is one of the inputs that Mr. Gibbs is seeking. And then secondly, if you would want to direct the staff to work with um, the 
the developer on annexation during the preliminary plan process instead of waiting until it's over. That's the other aspect of their request. Uh, it's really entirely up to council. It's your call on both items. And that much I got. But I was asking, what is staff's position on this? Oh, Dr. Trout, the, with regard to um, the, the annexation concept, mm -hmm. uh, the, the annexation of Pecan Grove in, in, the, in, in the manner in which the developer speaks is in line with uh, uh, the, the spirit of annexation. This, is, this would increase our tax base with the minimal uh, workload on, on, on the uh, staff. The idea of conserving the pecan grove is also in line with the, the principles and priorities of the city. Uh, we could most likely uh, incorporate that into our maintenance uh, with less than a half of a FTE. Uh, and so this is a project that has merit and, uh, and is in line with other development annexations that the city's made. So that's why well, we presented it to okay. you for consideration. Also, with regard to the snow plot, we, we focus on streets that are in the city. Uh, we are prohibited from using the assets of the city to maintain uh, uh, private property or assets that are not uh, right. in the city. Right. without special direction. Right. Uh, Follow-up question to that is uh, with regard to the annexation of Pecan Ridge, has there been any conversation with uh, stakeholders? Has there been a stakeholder meeting yes, or there, meetings? There, there was one stakeholders meeting held so far and we have tried to um, include the stakeholders in any of the meetings that we've had, including this one. So there was a stakeholders meeting, and this is to the second public hearing item to which they've been invited. So they've been as, as involved as we have. Okay, with the stakeholders meeting, can you tell me a little bit about the stakeholders meeting? When was it and how many people attended? Um, just off the top of my head, I don't have uh, the actual information in front of me, but we did have a good turnout. It was probably a year ago uh, in the springtime. Uh, Mr. Caruso was present, he's here tonight. Uh, we probably had a dozen or so residents, uh, many of whom are here tonight as well. Um, a very good open exchange of uh, information about the types of homes that would be built on the property and the types of amenities that would be offered in the subdivision. Um, I know Mr. Caruso took a lot of good uh, input from the residents at that stakeholders meeting about things like traffic. I believe the question of this, uh, or the idea of this traffic circle was uh, mentioned at that meeting. Um, so it was a very productive stakeholders meeting. and I think the stakeholders were pleased that we convened the meeting and allowed for that opportunity to discuss the proposal. And um, like I said, we've included them all the way into this uh, tonight's hearing. Okay. Uh, a single stakeholder who attended that means thank you, ma'am. Just as a clarification to what Mr. Martin said. Okay. Uh, let me speak to the applicant. Mm -hmm. I think it'd be a great idea if you have a stakeholders meeting before asking the council to do anything. That would be my recommendation. Because right now, I don't get the good sense that stakeholders are in concurrent in agreement with you on this project. And there may be some aspects of it that the exchange of ideas between the stakeholders and you, the developer, you might gain some insight as to some different things that you can do to increase the viability of the project. For one thing, like the circle that was presented tonight seemed like a good alternative but I think we need to have another stakeholder. We need to hear more from the stakeholders and then I'd like to get stakeholders to report back to staff so staff can report back to the council so we can get a better feel on what's going on because right now I don't have a good sense of what's going on. That's just my, my two cents on it. I know it's not in my district, it's in district one, but that's just my two cents on it. Thank you, sir. Any other questions? Yes. Mr. Wolfer. 
apologize for the go back. Uh, Mr. Miner, uh, on the signage that we had for this uh, notice, did we have signs up for this evening's uh, at the property? Yes. Yeah. It, uh, if memory serves me, I thought we had committed to a larger sign format for uh, these type of notices. The word, the feedback I got from some constituents was that the signage was pretty small, and I know that after we had some uh, some issues with the Jesuit property and uh, and maybe even back as far as the um, uh, the apartments that there may have been that we'd made a commitment to offering larger signs for the purpose of notifying people when there'd be a hearing or uh, some sort of opportunity for input. Well, we did change, as a result of that case that you mentioned, we did change the sign design from a horizontal sign to a vertical sign, so it sticks up a little bit more. We added a color band, a green color band across the sign to make it more uh, visible. Uh, we posted five signs for this particular hearing tonight, and we, as we did with the last public hearing, uh, and at very prominent locations uh, along the roadway. The intention of the sign is to just grab someone's uh, attention and, and so that they can see that something is proposed and to call the city of Bowie to find out more about it, because you can't really fit that much information on a sign if you do the size of the print is so small that it's not even helpful to anyone. So. We feel that the new sign design that we're using is, is effective. Um, they're not huge signs, but they're big enough that they will cap, catch your attention, and we put them at all of these visible locations in hopes that people will see that there's something proposed and that they'll call us, and, and they've worked. All right. um, I'll take a, I'll try and drive by and take a look. I, from, from consumer feedback, if you will, uh, I've heard that they're uh, still on the inadequate side. I'll take a look and we can chat further and maybe there's another alternative. I, I agree that, that there's no sense you can, in, in trying to put an entire, uh, you know, litany of, uh, of issues on a sign, uh, but it may be, uh, there may be some ways we can improve uh, communications there. So let's, uh, I'll take a look and then uh, we'll, we'll chat. Thank you. Any other questions, Dr. Carroll? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. Miner, I hear what you said about the signs, and we had a, a, a discussion about this at the beginning of the year uh, in District 4 at the Citizens Association of South Bowie uh, meeting. And one of the things that came up in that meeting, and I agree with it wholeheartedly, and I'm going to explain it to you, see if you guys agree with me. Signs are good if you're a pedestrian. If you're driving a vehicle, you cannot read a sign. There, we have signs up all over Bowie, and I can tell you from my own personal experience, if I do not stop my car in front of that sign, it is physically impossible for me to read the sign. We need to go to mailing this information to the residents. It can't be with so many residents that's in that particular area. I mean, I traveled over there. I, I went through that for at least three years when I was attending Bowie State University. I know normal school road. There's not a lot of houses there. We need to do this another way. Because I'm going to tell you, if you put a sign on a street, I don't care. It's got to be at least a big billboard. And when you have a big billboard sign, and we don't use those type signs, the big billboard signs, still, if you are in a motor vehicle, it is difficult to pick up what you're trying to convey on the sign. And the signs that we're putting up, the electronic signs, you cannot drive in the city of Bowie and pass an electronic sign and grasp the meaning of what's on an electronic sign. I, I challenge anybody to do it. I can't do it. I've tried it. I just can't do it. Thank you. Any other question? Mr. Stev, you have a motion? Yeah, uh, so at this time, I appreciate the applicant's time tonight, and I appreciate, you know, that you're, you're trying to do the PBS and uh, annexation concurrently. Uh, I'm not comfortable supporting annexation until I've seen information that would only be in the preliminary plan of subdivision, which staff indicates to me we could discuss in the next couple of months. So hopefully that's not too long of a delay, um, and, and so I, I, I don't recommend any action tonight. I don't get the sense staff needs a motion uh, if we're not prepared to, to annex this evening. Uh, is that correct, Mr. Miner? We don't have a recommendation for you tonight. It's really what council, whatever direction you want to give the applicant. So 
it's whatever form of emotion you want you to want put, put that in. Of, you want to put some direction on the table to staff and, and have your colleagues support it? So in that case, I'll just motion uh, in that case um, that we uh, schedule uh, uh, the, 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 the hearing for the preliminary plan of subdivision in the normal uh, uh, course as we would. And then at that time, we can look at annexation as well when we review the preliminary plan of subdivision. Second. Second. Oh, I'm sorry. Third one. <laughs> Third All right, any question? On, any, on, I guess this is the advice. <laughs> Motion. Any question? All in favor? Aye. Anybody opposed? All right, got it. Item next, uh, approval of ordinance 0719. Thank you, guys. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, this evening we have Lindsay Rader from Folk and Bolton, attorneys at law to represent uh, us as bond council. She will be giving you a summary of ordinance 0719 regarding the general obligation debt for the new uh, buoy ice arena. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, the ordinance that is before you this evening, which you may choose to consider for passage, was introduced on September 3rd. When the council decided to move forward with the ice arena project, we were directed to uh, prepare this ordinance that authorizes the financing. There is a lot of pages here and a lot of verbiage, but what this ordinance basically does is authorize the city to issue general obligation bonds, a, a, a single taxable series, in a maximum original principal amount not to exceed $24,200,000 for purposes of financing or reimbursing costs of the project. Now, there are references throughout the ordinance either to par amount or principal amount. When the city issues bonds, the principal amount of the bonds is the actual amount on which you pay interest. So if it's $20 million and your, your bonds bear different interest rates, you are looking at the par amount or the principal amount as to what you pay your interest payments on. Given the potential size of the issue, it's been recommended by the city's financial advisor that the bonds be sold by public sale at competitive bid, which means that the city will provide a notice of sale and will distribute a preliminary official statement, which is a disclosure document containing financial, economic, and demographic information about the city and details about the bond issue to potential underwriting firms and potential investors there will be a date and of sale that is set, a date and time, and the underwriting firms that are interested in purchasing the bonds will submit electronic bids. Um, they will bid for not less than the par amount, so they could bid with a premium over the par amount that's based on how they re-offer various maturities to investors, either at a premium or at a discount. In the markets in the last couple years, we have seen larger premiums than we used to. So what the ordinance does is it authorizes the reduction of the par amount of the bonds after bids are received so that you don't end up having more bonds issued than you actually need. So if you receive premium, we could reduce the final par amount of the bonds and you will then pay interest on that reduced par amount. Now these bonds are structured as taxable bonds to give the city maximum flexibility to charge for use of the arena in order to offset either debt service and or operating costs without worrying about federal tax code compliance. Um, in more recent years with taxable bonds, you don't necessarily receive as large of a premium as you do with tax exempt bonds, but it all depends on the market at the particular date and time. Uh, the bonds are scheduled to mature on Jan July 1 of each year in the years 2020 through 2049, and interest payment dates will be January 1 and July 1, starting January 1, 2020. The city will have the option to redeem the bonds in whole or in part that mature on or after July 1, 2029, beginning, or I'm, I'm sorry, on or after July 1, 2030, beginning on July 1, 2029. And if you decide to redeem bonds, you can either issue a new 
bond issue or you can use cash. It's entirely your option. Um, it is proposed that the bonds will be offered for sale on October 30th and we would close the bond issue on November 13th. As you recall, in August, the council passed Charter Amendment number 2-19, which amends section 58 of the charter regarding the city's general obligation borrowing powers. And one of the provisions was that when the city issues bonds or sells bonds by public sale at competitive bid, you no longer have to publish the notice of sale in a newspaper. And that's because underwriting firms no longer get their information from newspapers about the notices. So this ordinance provides that no notice of sale would actually be published, but the form of the notice of sale would be included as an appendix to the preliminary official statement. Uh, the ordinance provides for the preliminary official statement that I mentioned, and then upon pricing, uh, the completion of a final official statement that would include the final pricing terms. The authority to award the bonds upon receipt of bids or reject all of the bids for the bonds is delegated to the city manager, of course, with the caveat that the final principal amount or par amount of the bonds cannot exceed $24,200,000. The city manager, with the advice of the director of finance and the city's financial advisor, is given authority to make some adjustments to the notice of sale prior to the time bids are received in order to accommodate any changes in market conditions. And this has become common in the municipal markets be because we've seen movements over the last couple years. The ordinance also authorizes bond anticipation, general obligation bond anticipation notes to be issued in a maximum original aggregate principal amount not to exceed $24,200,000 and general obligation refunding bonds. We don't anticipate having to use such authority um, for bond anticipation notes, but the reason we include that in ordinance these days is because as we approach the sale date, if the market has moved the wrong way and there's a determination made that it makes more sense to obtain shorter term interim financing, for cost of the project, the city will have the ability to do that, but before we do that, we would have to come back to the council for such authority. Um, these days, we also include the authority to issue general obligation refunding bonds in an ordinance once any bonds have been issued so that you have the ability down the road if you have an opportunity to refinance the outstanding bonds upon favorable terms or in order to restructure your debt, um, that authority is in the ordinance. But again, we would have to come back to council for authorization before any such refunding bonds are sold or issued. Um, most importantly, the bonds do constitute a pledge of the city's full faith and credit and unlimited taxing power. And so the city does, or the ordinance does provide for that pledge. The substantially final form of the bonds is set forth as Exhibit A to the ordinance, and the substantially final form of the notice of sale is set forth as Exhibit B to the ordinance. Okay, have everybody sign up to speak? Miss it, Miss Seven? Yes. Okay, I'm sorry. Welcome. So I do. You can have... pull that down a little bit, tell you. Okay, That's for folks at home to hear you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I just have a few questions regarding the Ice Arena. Um, I got it in my newspaper. That's the reason for me being here this evening. I don't ice skate. I don't know what the plan is, if there is a plan for post-construction to maintain that property. I did see somewhere in this that the city of Bowie is moving toward a more green, uh, environmentally friendly uh, purpose. 
So I don't know how funding an ice arena that you know requires air conditioning would be very useful in that purpose uh, of being more environmentally friendly. Um, I'm just curious to see if there is any market projections. Is there a large influx of people who are interested in ice skating? Because I feel like uh, $24 million just for the construction of that building, it didn't say anything about the maintenance of that building over the next 30 years. So for me, in my opinion, as a 30-year-old woman, looking out 30 years from now, I'm not ice skating now. I'm not going to be ice skating 30 years from now. I don't know who is, but as a citizen of Bowie, I'm not interested in paying the taxes for $24 million over 30 years, considering that we're currently uh, dealing with one tax act that's not going to be over until 2025. We still have no idea what else is coming up with the federal taxation laws. So as that comes down to state and local jurisdictions, it's a concern for me putting so much money into a project that I do not see being useful for the entire community of Bowie. There are plenty of other projects, as the woman who spoke before okay. me mentioned, there are many other projects that we could use with that funding rather than an ice arena. I don't know if there are Disney on Ice is coming, if we have people training for the Olympics, do we have the ice capades coming back in town? I'm not really sure what we're doing. Are we bringing in a hockey team? Because that could be something. I don't know what the plan is for utilizing the facility that we would be putting $24 million into constructing it with no understanding of what the market or projections would look like to maintain it and to see who is coming. Because over 30 years, I'm not sure how much money ice rinks actually make, but is it going to pay for itself the construction and the maintenance of it, or is it just something that we're putting uh, Let me suggest you, the, the facility will be owned and operated uh, at, by the city for, for our use and purposes. All of those decisions have been discussed for the last couple of years. The item on the table tonight is, uh, you know, the decision to move forward has already been made by the council. Okay. The decision tonight is is the last vote on, on uh, the, the funding process. All right. Well, that's all I have. Thank you. <laughs> but th there's a history of this. I'm sure you can pick it up on the city's website or you can talk to somebody from staff. And I'm glad that I'll be, I'm sure uh, somebody in the city we're, staff will we're, we're walk you through the process. We'll give an update there, Mr. Mayor. Right. Happy to give her an update if you, after the meeting's over with. Thank you. But thank you, ma'am. Appreciate your comments. Mm -hmm. All right. That's all the people I've turned up to speak to. All right. Uh, questions of staff? Mr. Wolf. I have a, a couple of quick questions here. Um, my understanding is, um, uh, well, actually, a couple. Of, I'll start with the questions. Uh, are these bonds going to be stair stepped, or are they going to be all purchased at once? They would all be purchased at once. All purchased at once. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, you mentioned that there was a 2030 uh, would be the minimum length of time before we could refund is that right is that correct before you could call the bonds before i could call the bonds right you you can't take them out of the market before july 1 2029 um so you you literally couldn't call them before that date <clears throat> but i could but i could refinance them well refinancing them you could set the money aside but you couldn't actually use it until that date to pay off the bonds by calling them early okay so all right so notwithstanding the commentary about the um wanting to uh to, to refinance them it still still has to wait till the 2030 date right to call them away from the bondholders all right the next question i have is uh there's been some discussion of late about inverted yield on, on treasuries and, and things like that. Uh, any anticipated uh, or any thoughts on what any of that would mean towards our uh, our bond rates or uh, are we expecting there to be anything unusual during this time frame? I'm going to turn that question over to Mr. Matthews. As, as a bond lawyer, I can't actually give financial advice. So. <laughs> <laughs> well. Uh, Councilman Wolfley, as you know, the uh, municipal market yields have gone down uh, in current period. Um, our projections were basically done with a 3.2-3.75 interest rates. The current uh, interest rate on a AAA bond rating, a 30-year bond rating, is 1.9 percent. So. With that, I, you know, it's anticipated that 
the interest rate that we have calculated in our schedule would be probably reduced based on current market trend. Okay. And then uh, one more question on the other side for, for bond council. Uh, you mentioned the bonds being taxable. Uh, yes. is, there, uh, is there any way that makes sense to us uh, to, uh, to convert these to non-taxable? I, I heard you make mention of the fact that we had to have, uh, since we anticipate having income associated with these and rates and whatnot, uh, is there any other way around uh, around uh, taxable versus not taxable? Uh, not as this ordinance is structured this evening, but um, we were directed to to um, pursue a taxable financing in order to preserve the city's ability to structure, for example, allowing leagues, if that is what you choose mm -hmm. to do, to come in and reserve time. The problem when you issue bonds on a tax exempt basis and you want um, to allow private parties to come in and reserve facilities. There are a lot of limitations under the federal tax code. If they're both going to be reserving the use and making payments with respect to that private use. And while, of course, youth sports leagues are considered obviously a public purpose, most of those leagues are nonprofit entities that are not necessarily 501c3s. And so from a federal tax code perspective, they are still considered private users. Um, and so uh, th the thought was this gives the city maximum flexibility to actually try and recover um, costs from the users of the facility without having to uh, fit within some of the federal tax code's strict rules. Now I will say, again, as I cannot give financial advice, but in the last year or so, or at least the last six months, um, the, what I am hearing from financial advisors is the spread between tax exempt and taxable yields has been much closer than it has been in the past. And so taxable rates have been more favorable than they have been in the past. Thank you. Uh, I do appreciate it, and um, I'll uh, take this opportunity also to uh, voice my ongoing concerns, uh, not necessarily with the way you've been conducting the, uh, uh, the sale of the bonds or anything like that, but um, more along the lines of the concern about the, uh, the fact that we are in, uh, looking to go out and, and, and uh, issue these bonds. Uh, it's $24 million, and when we're looking at the numbers, uh, after interest, it actually balloons up to $37 million that we'd end up being, uh, paying out of pocket for, uh, for a ice arena that uh, is going to principally serve non-residents. Uh, and I'm not sure that that's a good use of, uh, of our bonding uh, authority and, and our purpose for, uh, uh, for, for taking care of our constituents and not necessarily um, you know, guest users. Uh, so that continues as a major concern for me. Uh, there just uh, doesn't make sense to me that we're out there, and I've made this comment plenty of times before, but I just wanted to share that one more time. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Any other questions, comments? Dr. Hill. Yeah, this is to uh, Mr. Matthews. Mr. Matthews. Mr. Matthews, if the rate is going down from 3.2 down to below 2%, how is it possible that the the large sum of money has been unanticipated, been unexpected. We're looking at a $37 million. Is that accurate? The $37 million is the principal plus interest based on a scale of multiple interest rates over the 30 years that range between 3% and 3.75%. And when we were pulling this together, that was kind of where the rates were at that particular time. Uh, the rates have fallen over the last month or so. But they could so change. The but, so they the could, but they could change. Right, but, but currently right now, the $37 million was projected based upon a 3.2%, but we are in an in a environment where the interest rate is less than 2 Yes. So, the 37 million is based upon the 3.7 and not the actual current rates. That's correct. Thank you. 
Any other questions? Mr. Carter? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'd like to move to approve um, Ordinance 0, pardon me, 07 19, providing for the sale and issuance of a City of Bowie um, single bond in the amount of 24 million. Second. second. Your second. Dr. Trout. Right, any questions on the motion? Mr. Mayor. That would be two point four million. Two, yes. Okay. Two twenty-four million. And not to exceed. And not to exceed. Yes. All right. And then motion, motion approved. Uh, ordinance 0719 has been moved and second. Any question on the motion? All in favor? No. Aye. Opposed? No. Four two. Mr. Carter? Yes, I'd like to move to adjourn. Second. Moved and second. Any question on the motion? All in favor? Good night. <laughs>